Welcome to part one of a nerve impulse, the resting potential. Uh, this is an axon all the way around here. We've cut it off at either ends because otherwise it wouldn't fit on the screen. The red uh, devices here are all to represent potassium gates or potassium channels. The blue blobs here are all to represent sodium gates or sodium channels. Uh, the outside is positive, the inside is negative, and the area that's the membrane of an axon is known as an axon membrane, and the area inside of an axon is known as the axoplasm. These circular areas with a little negative sign in them are to represent large negative proteins. Here we have the sodium-potassium pump, and those that's all the setup we have now for the axon. Now, the resting potential is what the potential difference is in an axon when it's not doing anything. There's no signal, but it's ready to receive a signal. Well, the potential difference is negative 65 millivolts. And if you watch the bottom of the screen, if you were to measure that over time, you would just register negative 65 millivolts. Nothing in particular is happening. However, why do we, in fact, have a resting potential of negative 65? And, in fact, why is the inside negative and the outside positive. Why is there this difference in potential? Well, if the inside is negative. One of the main reasons is the sodium-potassium pump. It pumps three sodium out of the axoplasm. Whoomp. For every two potassium, it pumps in. Whoomp. And so that creates a difference in charge. There is more sodium on the outside. Woohoo! Sodium! We're more! We have more of us! Oops, that was the negative sign. Woohoo! I'm negative on the inside. And, there, and you don't have as much potassium on the inside. There's only two are pumped in for every three pumped out. So the sodium potas potassium pump makes a difference there. There's more positive charge on the outside. The second reason is that the axomembrane is actually quite leaky. It's leaky enough that it, it lets some sodium in but it lets lots of potassium out. Oops, wrong one. And so some sodium goes in, but lots of potassium goes out. And so then we get a difference of charge because more positives have appeared on the outside than have appeared on the inside. And continuously, as that's going on, the sodium-potassium pump will then pump two potassiums in for every three sodiums out. Two potassiums in for every three sodiums out, and we end up with an excess of charge on the outside. And that means that the inside will be more negative, 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 and the outside will be more positive, 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 positive. The last reason we have for the difference are these negative proteins. They're too large, um, too large, to move through the membrane, so they just hang around, and their entire purpose is to be large and negative and they just add to the negative charge on the inside. So we've set up the axon, positive on the outside, negative on the inside. Sodium-potassium pump is continuously working to maintain these differences. Some sodium leaks in, a lot of potassium leaks out, and then the sodium-potassium pump has a difference in how much it pumps, the three sodiums out for every two potassium it's in, which leaves a lot of negative negative charge on the inside and a lot of positive charge, positive charge on the outside. The next part, uh, part two, will then focus on what happens when we get nerve conduction.